Welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In today's episode, we are going to start down the journey of building a new set of FOG servers running the latest version, 1.5.7. To break with the tradition of our previous FOG videos, we are going to move to using Debian due to some issues that the current install has with Ubuntu. So let's get started. All right, so we've got our virtual box up. We will start a new virtual machine. We'll call it Fog Master and Linux Debian 64 bit. We'll continue, assign it two gigs of RAM. And we will start through the hard drive creation process and we'll give it 30 gigs for this particular machine. Create. And we'll head directly into settings. All right. I'm turning on EFI and removing the floppy drive, adding a second processor core and enabling PAENX. Display can be left alone since we're going to run this as a server with no GUI. Storage. I've already downloaded the Debian net install for Debian 10.2. We'll turn off audio and we'll change our network to bridged. And we can say OK. And go ahead and start the machine. And we'll minimize our virtual box in the background. All right, we are going to do the graphical install. And most of these we will take the defaults, keyboard, language, all that good stuff. Of course, you want to set it to what is proper for you. But since I'm in the U.S. and I speak English, the defaults are there. We're going to call the system Fog Master. Continue, continue. Enter a root password. And add a new user. Time zone. And we'll get through the partitioning section and through selecting software. All right, so guided is fine for this particular use. If you are going to do a production VM, and yes, I say production VM because the FOG project developers do recommend that you run FOG in a VM. I would recommend using a separate virtual hard drive to be mounted at slash images and then considering the use of LVM so that drive can be expanded easily from within the system as you move forward. Of course, your other option with VirtualBox is that you can just set the size of your dedicated virtual hard drive for slash images and then use vbox manage from the command line to grow that drive and then resize it using something like gparted or from the command line in debian that is outside the scope of this particular series of videos but it's 
something that is possible. And if you are going to do this in a more production type environment, you would want to consider those options or something else entirely. For instance, you may have a NAS and you may mount slash images on that NAS over NFS or SMB and that may work very well for you. There are many options available. It's again outside the scope of this video to go into each and every one of those options, but just the flexibility of Linux allows these things and makes them quite easy. So we'll configure the package manager, no proxy. And as soon as we get the software selected, I will pause the video and let the install finish. And then we'll come back and go through the fog install itself. We're going to skip the popularity contest in this particular case, just because this VM probably won't be around very long. All right. So software selection, we're going to get rid of the desktop environment. We're going to get rid of print server and we're going to add the SSH server and leave the standard system utilities. This will make it fairly quick to do the install and not add a bunch of extra stuff that we don't necessarily need or we don't want pre-configured before installing fog. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now and we'll be back momentarily once this section of the install is finished and then we will continue forward. All right, we are back and the install is finished. We're going to go ahead and say continue. And we'll just check and make sure the drive has already ejected the ISO image. All right. Login as root. And what we want to do here is just get the IP address. And we're at 74.151. And so I'm going to bring over my terminal. We're going to SSH into the new machine as my user. And then we're going to elevate our privileges to root. So SU space dash and enter the root password. Okay. Now we're set to move forward. So we can open a web browser and go to fogproject.org download and we want to grab the link for the download and then we can go back to our fog master and we can do a wget and paste in our URL and that will get this downloaded for us. All right, that was quick and painless. So now we want to extract that. And good. All right, now we want to enter the fog project bin directory. So we're going to do cd fog project slash bin. We have our install fog shell script. And we're just going to say dot slash install fog dot sh. And we'll get this party started. Okay, it correctly detected a Debian based install. This is actual Debian. We're going to use a normal install. So just hit enter. 
No, we're not going to change the default network interface. Router address for DHCP, yes. That is my router. Would you like DHCP to handle DNS? So yes, this is going to get handled at the router. And that is the correct DNS address, the router address. Would you like to use Fog as a DHCP server? No. Internationalization? No, I don't need that. Do you want to change the default host name? No. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And it's going to go through its install. And this will take just a moment or two to install the required packages and take us to our next step. Okay, it's asking if the MySQL password is blank. And since the MySQL database was installed as part of the fog install, the proper answer here is going to be yes. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention that if you want to lock this down further, then you would want to either change this after the fact or before you run your fog installer, install MySQL or MariaDB and go through the secure install to set a password and all that stuff so that you would actually enter no to this and then supply the password. In a production environment, you would absolutely want to do this. But for lab purposes, we are going to accept the default and move forward. All right. Our next step. We're going to bring our Safari browser back up here. All right. And so we are going to go to our IP address for the fog server, 172.16.74.151 slash fog slash management. And we need to click the button to set up the database. And then we can hit enter in our terminal again to complete the installation. All right, so now it's telling us we can go back to our browser and log into the web interface. And it gave us the default credentials. So we're gonna log in as fog with the password of password, all lowercase. And from here, our fog hasn't really changed a whole lot. It's the same dashboard that we've seen since about version 1.5. And so we can go through, we have only one storage node at the moment. And that is this fog master server that we are currently running on. If we go over to users, we can list the users. And the first thing we want to do is change our password for the fog user. And so we'll enter the new password. and update that. So we are no longer using the default password set during installation. Now, if you're gonna have more people using the fog server, then obviously you want to set up additional users and let each person log in separately. So across the top, we've got hosts, groups, images, storage, which we'll get into more in another video. Snap-ins, printers, client settings, tasks, 
reports, and fog configuration. So to keep this initial video and the new series short, I'm going to end this here and we will pick up additional options and adding a storage node in upcoming videos. And that brings us to the end of another practical IT video and to the end of the year 2019. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up, please subscribe, please share on social media. Thank you once again for watching, for your support over the last little over two years that I've been doing this. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Have a safe and happy New Year's.